So you're probably wondering, whoa, what happened to the 30 day challenge? Well, ladies and gentlemen, sorry, let me get back into the light here. Uh, yeah, about that hunting season kind of started up and I really didn't time this out very well. What I should have done is done a 30 day challenge in August uh, because my brain from February to September is like fishing, fishing, fishing. And then, and then come about September, it goes fishing, hunting, fishing, hunting, fi hunting, hunting. So that's kind of what happened. Thursday really messed it up. I was stuck in traffic for five hours. As you know from that lipless crankbait video that I did, um, I planned on editing two videos Thursday and Friday. I only got the one out on Friday night. I was actually I was actually trying to Texas rig. There's a 400 pound mono, and I got some weights for all my decoys. Uh, yeah, I was up to like 12:30 doing that because I was duck hunting in the morning. And then I was gonna go bow hunting the rest of the day or that afternoon. So here's what I'm gonna do. I had all four videos filmed 20 day 27 through day 30. So I'm gonna to try to my best to post them this week. Um, what I realized is, you know, 30 days of straight videos, it's, it's a little tough. It's a little tough, it's okay. Uh, most of the bigger YouTubers that I was looking at, I was watching Milliken Fishing recently and uh, John B and some of those guys, and they post three videos, maybe four videos a week. I think that's probably what I'm gonna to start to do, three videos per week. Uh, if I throw a bonus video in, great, if not, Oh well, so I just got a shotgun GoPro mount, or GoPro mount for my shotgun, so I hopefully will be doing some hunting videos for you real soon. I was actually, I got three wood ducks opening day, which was Saturday morning in the state of Wisconsin. If you wanna see those, you gotta go to my Instagram right here. Check those out. Also, a lot of you saying you wanted to contact me. Best way to contact me, either you can direct message me on Twitter, right here, my Instagram, or I am on Facebook. I know I don't put my Facebook thing up here, but it is flop and crappie on Facebook. A lot of you message me on there. Um, if I can't get back to you in the comment section. That being said, this video is a white bass video, a white bass fishing topwater video that somebody requested in an older video of mine. So, appreciate you watching the 30 day video challenge. More videos will be out soon, hopefully. Let's just roll right into it. Three, two, one. Morning, morning, ladies and gentlemen. So today on the 30 day video challenge, we're chasing something a little bit different. In the comments section of the trout fishing video I did a while back, which I'll link in the, in the description below if you wanna check that video out, I, see, I asked you, what other species of fish do you want me to chase besides crappie? And one of the suggestions was some white bass, yep. So that's what I'm gonna go after today. Caught this guy on a buzz bait, actually, just right here. Um, I'm gonna let him go real quick. One second. So, that's what I'm gonna be chasing today, per the suggestion of somebody in the comments section. Uh, by the way, this is the Flop and Crappie channel. I'm Davis, and if you want to be sure you get all these videos in the 30 day video challenge, where I post a minimum of one video per day in the month of September, you gotta do two things. You gotta click the subscribe button, bottom right corner of the screen, somewhere down there. And then you gotta click that bell. That bell is gonna notify you every time I post one of these 30 day video challenge videos. Yeah, yeah. So today we're actually going after white bass. I filmed a little bit last weekend on this and uh, I was actually using this rig I've never fished before, hold on. And that would be a fluke. I've never actually fished a fluke before. Thought I'd try it out and actually looked up how to tie on the double fluke rig that they call it the donkey rig or whatever. Now I'm not gonna show you how to tie it up per se. I'm just gonna talk about kind of what I noticed. I watched a video from Scott Martin and uh, Lake Fork guy kind of walking through how they tie theirs up. And I wanted to know in the comment section if you do anything differently to kind of make sure, to make sure they don't get tangled. After about a half dozen casts of these, the double fluke rig, normally it would untangle itself, but sometimes it wouldn't and then the, one of the flukes would break off. So I'm gonna get that to the end. Right now I'm gonna go in to some topwater action. I was using a popper and a fluke rig uh, last week, and I'm gonna show that video first, and then we're gonna go try to catch a few more of these white bass. There's a healthy school of these fish on this lake. So we're gonna see if we can go catch some. Wow, I'm in shallow water right now. All right, rewinded a week ago. Oh, 
All right, so here's my setup. Got the nice little white fluke power bait and uh, three aught offset hook, eight pound braid. And I know this is not an ACC crappie six rod, but I didn't want to have to re-spool a rod with eight pound braid and then only to have to take it off when I go crappie fishing. So I just, I didn't want to do that. So that's why I'm using this as just a seven foot medium action casting rod. And try to, try to skip, whoa. Oh, there he is, oh no. Oh, and he took my, he took the tail, took the tail. All right, I think I found him. I just had one, something blow up and tear my fluke in half. And I just had another fish blow up right here and something right here. I think I found him. I'm hoping they're white bass. That's what we came here. White bass on a fluke. Never fished it before. Kind of getting the hang of it. It's a, it's a little tricky to start with to make sure it stayed on top of the water. Actually, the slower I worked it, the easier it was to keep it on top of the water. Oh, big school of them, come on! There was like 30 there. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. How did I not catch one of those? There he is, there he is. Got him that time. I think it's a largey. Yeah. I think I got the blow up too, which is always nice. But I swear I saw a big school of white bass in here. Baby largey. Something just, there he is, got him. Not on top water, but. What is he? Yep, it's a white bass. It's what we came here for, they're not big. There's a huge school of them though. Finally, finally got what we came for. White bass on a fluke. There he is, top water, got him, oh no. Had him, had him. Let's see if I can get a couple more and then I'm gonna tie on that double fluke rig just to see how it fishes. There, oh, you can, there, there he is, got him that time. <laughs> Man, these are fun to catch. Got him. It's a little bit bigger one. There are some pretty big size white bass in here. I've, I've caught upwards of 20 inches on these guys. So these are, these are dinks compared to, whoops. Compared to what, there are some big ones in here. Okay, so I didn't really, uh, I didn't want to video how I tied it on because there's plenty of videos and this is my first time actually tying it on. But basically there's two swivels one slides up and down your main line, which is my braid here. And then they say to use fluorocarbon, but I didn't have any fluorocarbon leader. Um, so this is eight pound mono. Um, so the one swivel can slide up and down the line. It's about, well, basically they're, they're about six inches apart, the flukes. And the other swivel is actually tied onto the main line and then the leader's tied onto that one. One of them is, that's the longest leader. And then the shorter leader 
I have is the one that slides up and down the line. There are a big school of them. They actually just swam under the boat. I was messing around with a popper. There, oh. Just had a hit right there. The one thing I will say about this, it does twist. I don't know. I get twists a lot as you're casting. So I do want to catch a fish on it. I do want to catch a fish on it. Well, found the school again with the popper, doubled up on him right there. Look at that. There's a huge school and they, once one hit it, they all just kind of went after it. Okay, I don't want to get skewered again here, so. All right, here we go, double fluke. There, oh! Come on, hit it. Come on. Oh, he snapped me off. Unreal. Well, I'm going to tie another one on real quick. Right next to the boat. There he is. Oh my goodness. They are right under the boat. All right. So there's the first part of catching bass and blow ups. And the goal is today, I want to try to get at least one more top water blow up. I hope you appreciate those top water blow ups. It's hard to t try to do a self-film topwater blow up, it really is, but I did my best. So I'm gonna be throwing a fluke rig and then I'm gonna be talking about the double fluke rig at the end of the video here. There's fish busting all over the place. I got bait fish, bait fish on top of the water. So I think today might be a really good day for a sl slow motion blow up. Unfortunately, I can only do 60 frames per second. Unfortunately, there's no 240 frames per second, kind of like a, a Jay Siemens video. Oh well, all right. I'm gonna throw the chesty on, put you in 60 frames, and let's see if we can get a blow up on a fluke rig. All right, so I'm just gonna go single fluke for right now, then I'll work a double fluke in a second. Hope you enjoyed that first part. Um, I'm not on the spot I really want because there's actually three other bass fishermen on the spot I wanna be at, or the spot I, I know there's some white bass, so. But there's also large mouth and small mouth where, where they're at too, so. I just saw something blow up right in front of me here. Oh, there he is, there he is. There's one. Oh no, did he let it go? He let it go. I don't know what that was. Dang it. Oh, some, come on. Oh, those are white bass. Why won't they hit it? They're right behind it. They're right behind it. This won't commit. Oh, yes. Oh, come on. Yes, there he is. There he is. Got him that time. There we go. It's a decent one, too. There we go. <laughs> About time, there's a big school of them out there too. Holy smokes. There we go. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> I need our players to get this thing out. Got one on the blow up. There's a school of probably 20 of these guys. Man, that's fun. They're all just chasing it. There we go, yes. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for this white bass video. It's a good size one. I don't know, what is that? Uh, a little over 15. Most of the ones I caught on the first part were probably, I don't know, 12, 12, 13 inch range, maybe a little smaller. Um, the biggest I've caught in this lake is I think is about a 19 to 20 inch range. So yeah, they're, they're fun to catch on flukes. I'm gonna let this guy go. I've heard they're decent to eat. Let me know in the comment section below if you've ever uh, cooked these up. Also, let me know if you got a recipe or something, because I might do a catch and cook. 
if enough people comment saying they they eat these and they're pretty good I'll do a catch and cook on one of these so I'm gonna let this guy go the double fluke rig that I had set up there and I kind of showed it a little bit I had my mainline braid coming down and then I had it tied onto I had a, a swivel that could move slide freely up and down my main braid line and then I had another swivel tied on that was tied onto the braid line I'd have one leader I believe I used fluorocarbon it was a week ago I don't remember now fluorocarbon I'd use like two feet long leader or something like that tied a little offset hook and the fluke and then I tie another shorter leader and I think they sat about six inches short of each other so one fluke would be here and the other one would be down here so after casting that about a half dozen times or so it, it would tangle I could get it untangled for the most part but every once in a while that swivel that would slide freely up and down the braid line it would actually get wrapped into the other swivel and what would happen is when a fish would hit it, it'd create a little too much tension and the, the knot would actually pop um, on either the braid or, or the fluorocarbon. So my question to you, because I've, I've never fished these um, and I, I do like it a lot. Morning bite, top water, especially for white bass. There's a lot of white bass in this lake. I might do more, I'll probably do more white bass videos on this lake um, just because the population, there's a good population of them. In the comment section below, is there a way for you to tie, that you tie these double fluke rigs that they won't tangle um, and they won't break off? Now, that the way I tied it is the exact way that Scott Martin showed in a video, is, and I think Lake Fork guy uh, showed in his video. So if you have a different way of, of tying these on, I'd love to hear it in the comment section below. And again, be sure to subscribe and click that bell. They gotta click the bell to get notified that I post these videos. That ensures you, you will get notified. All right, we'll see you on the next 30 day challenge video. Bye-bye.